is The Magnificent Mind of Daisy Dunn, and I'm playing Daisy Dunn. So Daisy is actually a very complex character. She's incredibly intelligent, and she might have the most magnificent mind in the world, but there's something pulling her back to her past that she needs to explore. So we, we explore that in the course of the play, and kind of the foundations of this very special friendship she had that challenged who she thought she was, because she basically confines herself to a basement full of um, experiments and books, and she thinks that's enough. Today's case study, the magnificent mind of Daisy Dunn. Huh. Daisy, huh. yellow centre, white pickles, common to every household garden. Quite ordinary, unlike me. Actually, it's a weed. The idea came from this image, um, which was from the Sunday Times, I yeah. think. We just really liked, I just found it one day, one Sunday, and I just really liked the idea of this woman behind a wall, and just the way the two images are merging with the wall and the woman, and we just kind of thought, oh, that'd be a really interesting start to a story, the idea of why someone would be behind a wall, if it's, we kind of wanted to stay away from the idea of a ghost, but we just kind of played with that idea for a bit, and then came up with a different idea, which we won't give away. Um, Daisy isn't like other girls, she's better than other girls. Most of the time it's cool because when she sees a spider, she doesn't run off screaming just like the rest of them. She picks it up and she knows everything about it. I think she will be a genius when she grows up. I play the part of Mittens. I am Daisy's uh, friend. I'm there to basically make Daisy think about what she's doing with her life. Probably bringing a bit of fun to her life. And Daisy's very much got her head in the books, so to speak. So I'm there to make her think about maybe other things in life that she's not really experiencing. Our main focus is to do a good piece of theatre. It doesn't really matter what age group our audience is. But we happen to focus on theatre for young audiences. So I suppose in, in terms of the set and that, we would always try to make it engaging for children. And there's puppets in this production, which children really seem to respond to very well. We work with a designer called Dara McGee. So we were kind of, because the story is about a friend, a special kind of friend. We wanted characters that were there but weren't necessarily on the stage, so he just came up with the idea of maybe having puppets on a wall. And we've, we've actually never really used puppets before. Put away those old books. Daisy, would you not like to buy Tarble? The show is perhaps a little bit darker than previous Cups and Crowns productions, in that uh, we see Daisy's character has kind of imprisoned herself in, in a space that she she feels too vulnerable to leave. Magic. But out there is where everything is. Daisy, you're missing all the magic. 